morning, everybody. We will uh, start with a brief opening statement of the coach and then take questions. As we always do, just raise your hand and we'll come around for questions. Um, obviously, this is going to be a very important football game for us. We understand all the things that are going to be going on with it. One thing I'd like to mention, though, is this will be our Ring of Honor game. And coming back and thinking guys in the past that did amazing things, Ernie Davis, the first African-American Heisman Trophy winner, along with Jim Brown, you know, the greatest of all time, and a uh, dear, dear friend that passed away, Floyd Little, who uh, I owe a lot to. And it's going to be great to see all three of them recognized with family members in the, in the dome. And uh, hopefully it'll be an exciting game for fans. Questions? You know, a couple of weeks ago you had said that top 25 ranking was good, but you're waiting for that top 20 to come along. I mean, what was your reaction when you guys were number 18 in both polls yesterday? I thought deserved. I thought deserved. And now we have to go out and prove that uh, we deserve the faith that everybody's putting in us. So not only are you in the top 20, all of your land NC State who's ranked in the top 20 in both polls, the first matchup between two top 20 teams here in Syracuse since 1998. What does that say about the excitement in the room? I say that's a long time ago. <laughs> that's a lot of excitement. That's, it's, uh, that's, a, that's a strange statistic. But we're excited to have the opportunity to play NC State. Uh, Coach Dorn does a fabulous job. I really, this is an uh, individual that I really like. I like how he's ran his programs in the past. He's a guy that's worked his way up. You know, his recent job before NC State was Northern Illinois in the MAC, a team that I played when I was at Bowling Green State University. I uh, have a lot of respect for him, and I like the way he does things. Uh, one thing that I will be telling the, uh, the team this week, and I have told them, is that this is, you're playing a football team. This is not a bunch of individuals. And they're also playing a football team, not a bunch of individuals. So it's going to be a fantastic test. Coach, how would you describe, I mean, every football game is physical, but it feels like this team is really physical, and that's how they got through that game last week when they lost the quarterback. I mean, what pops do you on film when you see the physicalness of this team? I think you're right on. This is, this is 15 rounds heavyweight. It's going to be some slugs going out there. There's going to be some shots, and uh, you're going to get hit really, really hard, and how you handle that's going to affect the game and it's going to be everybody that's out there on a the football field. It will be a physical contest. With Devin Leary potentially out after suffering that shoulder injury, how much more kind of, I guess, work or labor does that put on you guys to prep when you don't know who's going to be at quarterback there? We've got to prepare for both of them, and we have to assume that he's going to play. Any, any guy with that type of moxie, somebody that's been around as long as that kid has, you know, if he's, going to, if he's got an opportunity to step on the football field, he's going to do it. So it makes us have more work. It makes us have more work in a normal week. We didn't get to take advantage of having an extra week off because now we have to go back and do research on the other young man as well. But the way we're preparing is we expect him to be out there with the opening snap. Hey, Coach, what goes into just the bye week in general? How recharged uh, are you guys healthy physically? Just what, it, what was it like last week? Our big thing is you still have to practice, but the main thing coming out of a bye for me is two things. You want to come back as healthy as you can, and you want to come back as fresh as you can. But you don't want to be stale. You know, you don't want to, hey, we didn't play a game this week, and, and uh, I'm not going to jinx it like I've done before. So we need to make sure that we work hard enough that uh, we get back into game speed really quick once the game starts. And hopefully we've done the things this week to uh, make that advantageous for us. Coach, what are the main things you've taken from last year's game in Raleigh into this game, maybe adjustment-wise or ways to stop certain games? Not a lot. You know, again, I think every year a team is different based off of who you've got coming back and who's moved into starting lineups. What I will say is that a lot of their guys have played a lot of games, and a lot of our guys have played a lot of games, and they know each other. And the only thing we don't know is how much they improved in the last 12 months and what they don't know is how, many, how much we've improved in the last 12 months. But we do have a very good understanding of each other. Got a couple of personnel questions to run by you. Denise Jacques has. You can run them by. <laughs> Did they just go? <laughs> <laughs> Denise Jacques has 
you, Jeff, as we saw had a, an air cast put on during the Wagner game. Is he is that an, a season end injury or is he potentially returning? Season ending. Season ending. And then Derek McDonald hasn't played the past two games. What's his status? Looking Hope like? to have him out there. In the Wagner game, John Tucker got a little banged up just a little bit. But how is he feeling? He was at practice on Sunday and he was looking good. Hi. <laughs> um, just going into this being ranked as high as you guys are. Start again. Uh, just going into this being ranked as high as you are now all season, it was kind of like this underdog mentality. Now you guys have the target. How do you avoid a letdown on Saturday? Oh, I don't know about the word letdown. We're getting an opportunity to play somebody that we played a lot. We understand how physical they're going to be. Uh, the last time we played them, they were at their place, and now we get an opportunity to play them in the JMA. Coach, can you talk a little bit about what Carlos Federal has done for you this year um, with the run game, just as a center? Carlos has done a wonderful job for us, taking over for a guy that, uh, you know, the previous center who had been with us a long, long time. And... Uh, I'm, I'm thinking back to, I saw him watching him in practice yesterday and sitting right here taking a knee and we're talking afterwards, but he doesn't give his due. So I'm glad that you guys are about to do an article on him. He's done a really nice job for us. He settled down that offensive line and uh, everything starts with the quarterback in the center. And if you can't get the snap and you can't get that communication, there's a very good chance the play is not going to be that good. So uh, he's a very, very valuable part of what we do and I'm, I'm excited for him. Michael uh, Coach, back in 2018, you got your sixth win of the season against the same NC State team. Does that really play into the game plan at all this week? You know, to tell the guys that, you know, we've done this before, we can do it again. Get more eligible. No, uh, I, it, it, again, every year is fresh. We look at things every year is fresh. Every week is 1-0. and uh, we, we understand and we can go back and look in the past, but it doesn't determine what's going to happen in the future. And uh, this is a good football team. Uh, we think we have a good football team, too. When the, when the game is over, we're, both teams will know exactly where they're at. Coach, we talked to John Wildhack last week. He said there's already over 40,000 tickets sold for this game. What do you think that atmosphere is going to be like on Saturday? You know, this is – I had some of the new coaches, and they were like, oh, the Dome is so loud, and da-da-da, da-da-da, all the guys that you guys want to talk to. And I'm like, that's not loud. I said, that's not loud. You're having a conversation with me after the game and your voice is not gone. That's not loud. I said, wait until you get 40 something in there. And actually I said 44. I don't know why I would come up with that number, but 44,000 or above is the number I'm, I'm looking for. And uh, that's when it's loud. So Emily, get ready. Okay. And let's see if we can hit that number. Coach, in, in looking back um, with some time during the bye week, specifically on the offensive line, why do you feel like the penalties are continuing at the rate that they are? Do you feel like you're making some progress in addressing them? Some of it is the style of our play. We, are, we have massive motions, massive shifts, and we have to be settled. And while we're motioning and we're shifting, the defense is moving and readjusting. It's, it's attacking the middle part of the defense that we're playing. But we also got to hold our water. We've got to settle down and not move. When they start moving guys around based off of what they're seeing, we've got to do a better job of sitting in there. You said you're just still adjusting to a new offense, only six games. So do you, is there a number in your head like you build in, like, you know, that's acceptable to have this amount of penalties given the situation? No, we're always, we're always striving for perfection, even though we, may, we know we may, not, we may not catch it. But we're not, I'm not comfortable not, I'm not comfortable saying that we're going to stop doing certain things on offense to make it easier. Okay, we need to, we need to catch up with the style of offense that we're running and settle those penalties down. Huh? Last year's bye week came a little bit late in the season. I mean, it's too early to tell, but you feel like this bye week coming, is coming at a good time for the team? When the season started, I didn't like where the bye week was. But once again, you know, we're not all knowing he is. And when right now, I think the, the bye week's coming at a perfect spot, okay? Maybe not an A-plus, but definitely an A-minus. And no complaints whatsoever. We needed it. We're at a point where we needed to get away, let those guys go home, uh, get some pat on the backs a little bit, and get them back here to practice. 
we're at a point where we need to heal as a football team, even though we know the stretch is going to be longer on the back end. This was not a bad time at all for a break. So I'm happy with where it ended up with. You guys know that this it's gotten smaller and smaller and smaller in here. But post game gets bigger. There's always more. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you for uh, Tuesday requests.